Is it very easy to know how many oligarchs there are actually uh, with assets in this country? No, not at all. Uh, so far, the government has indicated that they're going after 100 individuals and um, entities. They've named eight people. Now, those people that they have named, they're not exactly household names, but they are close to Putin. What do I mean? So probably the, the most interesting one, Kirill Shamilov, um, Putin's former son-in-law, Russia's, uh, Russia's youngest billionaire, made a lot of money from petrochemicals, members of the Rottenberg family, um, two of them, but uh, Putin, uh, his relationship goes back with members of that family to the 1980s, perhaps even further. He was once a sparring partner with Arkady um, Rottenberg. And then Gennady T uh, Timoshenko, the, the banker, his relationship with Putin goes back to the 1980s. But those, those are people sort of very close to them. They're very interesting names, not on that list um, yet. Um, people like Roman Abramovich, um, Oleg um, Deripaska, to Alex Navalny named 35 people of um, uh, who, who Western powers should be going after. Not as many people um, have been named yet, yeah. but that may toughen up in the days, days ahead. And what does going after actually mean in real terms, uh, Robert? Is it possible to say that if you are one of these figures close to Putin and therefore subject to sanctions, you can't own anything anymore in the United Kingdom? Your companies will be, will be stopped, your houses will be seized, your assets will be taken. Is it as, is it as strong as that? Well, good luck, really. I mean, what they what the government has said is um, that they're, they're freezing assets of these people. And then if you're a Russian national, there will be a £50,000 limit um, in terms of what you can hold um, uh, in terms of a UK bank account. But actually seizing these um, uh, assets will be a lot, lot harder. So um, some work by Transparency International suggests there's one5 uh, billion pounds worth of UK property owned by people close to um, Putin. Um, Michael Gove, the um, cabinet minister, was saying uh, over the weekend that the, the, the government should be seizing these properties. Legally, that's extremely challenging. People who've taken on organisations that have taken on these people in the past, uh, the National Criminal Agency, the Serious Fraud Office, they, they talk about it being a sort of David and Goliath situation. These people um, had hu you know, huge resources to spend on lawyers. Um, it will not be easy, but there does appear to be a new resolve. And there are signs that, that the government is, is toughening um, the legal system. But we'll, we'll have to wait and see just how successful this is. And just finally, is it going to become easier to know exactly who owns what in this country? Because I imagine that absolutely bedevils you when you're compiling uh, the rich list. The, the, there's an argument that I think they're going to they're going to no longer allow foreign owners of properties to hide their identity by using shell companies. So you, you'll have to know who owns what. Is it as straightforward as that? And will that help? <sighs> Potentially will be hugely, hugely significant um, um, for combating um, financial crime, but also guess combined with the Sunday Times rich list. But there are about 90,000 UK properties owned by these shell companies um, that have been identified, that have been set up in, 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 recent, in recent years. Um, but I just wonder about the, whether actually this will come to truth. You remember unexplained um, sort of financial orders that were introduced by the government um, four years ago. The government promised to use them 10 times a year to um, combat dirty money coming into the UK. Um, there have been four, four uses of them so far in four years, and none of them have been for Russian, um, Russian yeah. individuals, Russian oligarchs at all. <laughs>